Hello, welcome to our show. We're glad that you could come. We're gonna have a hoot. We're gonna have some fun. Sit back, put your feet up and relax. Hope you've had a drink or three. The more you drink, the better we will be. And one of the things I always tend to do is write piss take songs, like satirical songs and stuff, and so I thought I've got to get this silly song shit off my chest, otherwise I'm never going to have a successful band, so I put a show together, mostly to just sort of showcase all the different things I could do, and that was in 2003, and it just went really well, and when I did it, I just thought, this is great fun, I want to do this. Well, at the time, I think, personally for me, when I first thought that, oh, maybe we'll actually just do comedy, I was already performing music with, with Rusty and some other guys at the time, and, uh, and comedy just seemed to be selling better, you know, we were in comedy <laughs> venues, people were there, they were laughing, the feedback was great. It's fun yeah. to do comedy. Oh, it's too. a lot of fun. I just didn't fit into to a lot of the music theatre stuff, so I started writing my own stuff for other people, and then I wrote stuff for myself, and got the idea of putting it, putting a show I'd written for myself into the comedy festival, and I did, and it really struck a chord, and there wasn't really anyone doing the sort of stuff I was doing, which is great. The comedy, the comedy world really embraced what I was doing and uh, gave me an opportunity to take it to larger audiences and tour and stuff. So. There's just nothing quite like the whole sort of how exhilarating it is, particularly performing live like we're doing the show here tonight in, in Shepparton. And just every single um, moment you've got to be very sensitive to the audience because you're, you know, you, your timing for every joke has to be adjusted based on the response from the audience from the previous joke and you know and sort of getting a sense of oh if if they're giggling at something you might be able to milk it a little bit more or so just that kind of yeah I used to do these gigs at uni when I'd mix up serious songs with the comedy and uh, you know you're playing some earnest ballad about depression and uh, people are sort of all wandering off and looking troubled but then you throw in like a comedy song like disco chicken that I had and suddenly everyone just sort of stops and turns around and has the full attention and go, you know, it's like, oh my God, someone's doing something funny. And uh, yeah, I just realised that, uh, you know, you get addicted to, you get addicted to people laughing. And I just don't talk anymore. I wear different coloured t-shirts according to my mood. I'm so postmodern that I work from home as a surf life saving consumer hotline. And I'm afflicted by the need to have something to say, right, which is kind of annoying. But um, I don't, I, I, I want people to leave and not forget what the show is about by the time they get to their car, you know, I want it to be about something to be important and possibly change people, which is quite naive and earnest, but that's what I think. And so um, I like the, uh, the, the notion that an idea can travel from being in your head uh, onto, onto the page you learn it, you work it how you're going to do it, and then you work it out in front of an audience, and it has this reaction that, you know, you've only guessed that, you only had it, uh, you know, you thought, oh, I think it's going to be funny or interesting, or I think the audience kind of sometimes reacts the way you think they are, sometimes they don't. And what is great, the best thing about being able to perform all the time is that you get to constantly learn that, and the more you do it, the more you understand, oh, this will work and this won't. There's a few, I don't know, it's funny doing that. It's the whole veteran philosopher thing's like, my main shtick's always been that the veteran philosopher's kind of an awkward, nervous, weird kind of character, which is possibly just an exaggerated version of me. But when you're doing that and you're not too sure about it and you're not actually that confident, it, uh, it doesn't really work. And I just like, I often say when people go, hey, that gig is really good, I go, yeah, you're lucky you didn't have to see the 150 gigs that weren't very good to get to that point where it is actually okay. And, uh... It's not really punchline, shit just goes by and you either get it or you don't. I, ha I definitely have quieter audiences and I'm just going to assume that there's a few people in the audience who are just loving it and I'm going to do it for them, you know. You've got to always do that, mate. And uh, yeah, I think I've had a lot of gigs where I just felt the audience get really weirded out and but not, didn't have the ability to bring them back, whereas... Hopefully now I think I'm a little bit better at that. 
If mum and dad were married and gay I wouldn't be the man that I am today I'd see things a different way If mum and dad were married and gay I think I was like the nerdy music kids, I think, you know, was me. It was all the people who were trying to hang out with me. Oh, that's, I had to yeah, sort of pick that's and the choose. problem was, yeah. I was kind of, <laughs> no, no, not really in the main cool kind of group. Sort of on the fringe. I was in high school, tended to be with kind of the musicy sort of performing people. And mm. the, the really sort of cool people were the, uh, the kind of sports kids. R Rusty wasn't like the funny guy in the class, but he used to write for that guy. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I did all my homework. And did a couple of players, never got in, never got any parts in any of the players. I got kicked out of the music school. I quit piano after grade three. I uh, got kicked out of the choir for not turning out to practice. Um, they weren't particularly interested. Uh, but you know, my, my, my uh, up until year 12, my hobbies were bodyboarding and hockey and running. You know, I was much more interested in that stuff. But w I hung out with the, I, think I hung out with the funny kids. I didn't hang out with the toughs or the you know, the sports people, that's for sure. I was just a bit of a nerd, but I think because I had the ability to hurl out wisecracks and stuff instead of getting really angry when people when people tease me. Uh, that, uh, you know, the whole comedy being a self-defense mechanism thing, it's quite a valid cliche and uh, sort of felt like the jester for the king and queen who were like the, you know, the really cool people. who are just sort of there for more entertainment value. I kind of moved around a little bit. I think I got on with most most people, really. It's hard when you're trying to, like, uh, I'm 30 now, and so for, uh, I've done some really fun things in the last 10 years, like a lot of, put out a lot of work, and you know, composed, and done lots of different stuff, but, but you do have to do a lot of work justifying yourself to yourself in the face of your peers who are going on and earning money and, and, and having nice cars and jobs and stuff, especially when kids, people, peers of yours that you think are a bit thick are really rich and you go, fuck, so you can get rich when you're thick, fuck, what am I doing, you know, and it, it can be quite frustrating, so you do a lot of that, yes, arts are very important, you know, what I'm doing is important, but half the time you don't believe yourself and you just go, dude, you're just indulging, well, what the hell, why are you doing this, you're not helping anyone by being a, an artist, you're just doing it because you want to show off or something, like that. so there's a lot of that self-doubt. I spent a lot of the first couple of years in Melbourne feeling very shit about what I was doing while all my friends were having jobs and stuff, but now they're all fat and balding in Perth, and uh, <laughs> for me it's all just bitches and coke, it's great. The, they, they keep coming up and now like we, we're married and we have kids and stuff, but I see some kids from school who was like, you know, the cool kid or something, and he's just like this big fat guy with like, you know, three kids and... <laughs> Little family guy kind of thing, and uh, digging a hole. yeah, digging a hole, and uh, or an accountant or something. You just go, man, you know, I'm it's not for you. No, exactly. We're still basically, you know, doing things that we were doing in, when we were in our early twenties. Although we we treat it very seriously, mm. as a, you know, job. as a business now that we've got kids and stuff. Definitely. I find it's hard to get an idea. If you get an idea, it's good. You get an idea, it's good. You can write. That's no issue. But you know, you can sit. You can spend all the time you're writing if you've got no good ideas, and yet stuff sometimes you get heaps of ideas and then you have none so it's a little bit difficult I, I, I think it's like the feedback you know you do a funny line you immediately get a laugh or not makes and you so, feel good yeah it definitely feel makes wanted. you feel good and then people there's not many jobs where when you finish work someone comes and says man you were fantastic that was such a great job you really picked up that garbage so well you know, no one says that to it's you overall to, to do it as you're living it's just it's fun like we we treat it seriously and we go and we sit in our uh, office when we write and we try and think of jokes so that invariably involves laughing and trying to think of fun Sing, stuff. So ooh, yeah. it is a fun thing to do. Sing, I am an audience member. I am an audience member. Why are you making me sing? Why are you making me sing? <laughs> you self-indulgent wanker. You self-indulgent wanker. Just get on with the fucking child.